So, let's talk about the budget constraint. Now, suppose you're in a situation where you have a $10 income and that you can buy good X or good Y, apples or oranges, for example. Let's say that the price of good X is $1 and that the price of good Y is $2. Now, let's try to think about all the possible bundles that you're able to consume. Now, here, if X costs $1 each, well then you can buy with your $10. If you wanted to, you could buy all 10 of good X, right? So then you'd have 10, you could spend all $10 on good X and so you'd be able to buy 10 of them. But then you'd have zero of good Y. So again, any point on this plane here is a bundle. It's similar to a PPF from the beginning of the course, but now it's for the consumers from their point of view. How much, it's really about their budget constraint. What are all the bundles that they're able to consume? One big assumption here again is that your income is only being spent between these two goods, and so these are the only two goods in the world, so you don't want to waste your income. Now let's say good Y costs $2. So now, for out of your $10 budget, if you were to hypothetically spend all of it on good Y, for $2 each, you could buy five items of good Y, right? Because five each at two each would be your full $10 income. So that with zero units of X is also another bundle. So now, and really, you can buy any sort of combination here. For example, you could, you know, buy, if you were to buy four units of good Y, then you'd, you know, that would be $8. So you'd have $2 left to spend on a good X, and so you could buy, you know, two, two units of good X. So that's four comma two is a point here, and so on. But either way, when you were to, if you were to make your budget constraint, you'd find that it actually, the slope is always equal to, here the slope of this, it's negative, of course, because it's downward sloping. To buy more of one good, you have to give up some of the other because, you know, you're on a budget. But here, the slope, the rise over run is 5 over 10. The slope is a half. So the slope, by the way, of the budget line, the slope is always going to be negative. But then it's always P of good X over P of good Y. So there's that. It's always here. In this case, it's a half. And if you look at the price of good X over the price of good Y, 1 over 2, that is a half. It's not just a coincidence. Uh, we won't get into this math, but if you wanted to, you could write out the mx plus b using this budget constraint, px times x. What that is is um, what each unit of good x costs times how many of them you buy. That's how much money you spend on good x. So if you were to buy, you know, three bananas at $2 each, then three times two, that's $6. That's how much you spent on bananas plus the price of good Y times how many of how many units of Y you buy, that's how much money you spent on good Y. That has to equal your income. So this is this equation is called your budget constraint. And if you rewrite it such that you have Y on the Y axis and X on the X axis, you end, end up actually getting that the, you know, it's like an MX plus B, but the slope here is negative, you know, PX over PY, you know, is this slope here. Uh, plus, you know, some intercept that you can get. But either way, the slope is always this for the budget line. So now what that means is on this plane, if you were to ask yourself, hey, could you afford to buy this point over here with this x, y coordinate? Not really. It's outside your budget constraint. Could you afford to buy this point? You could afford to buy it, but it's probably not the single best point you want to buy because, you know, you could buy more of each good, you know, by going somewhere here on your budget constraint. Or you could buy more of both and be happier. So really, your single best point is probably going to be something on your budget constraint. But here's a question, almost tricky question. Which point is better, this point or this point? Well, it's actually unclear. And this is where utility comes in. Yeah, sure. This has, uh, you know, not, you, not spending your entire income amount. So you're wasting money. That's not the single best point. And this does have you spending all of your income. But this point might actually give you more happiness than this point. Because what if the two goods here were, you know, what if X was houses and Y was pens? Well then, sure, here you're spending all your income and you have a lot more pens and two houses. But this one, even though it has fewer pens, has more houses. So even though you're not spending all of your money, you'd probably, you might want more houses than pens, right? So uh, who knows which one is, uh, you know, better. So that's why 
that's where utility comes in. So this is almost a completely unrelated thought process on the same graph, on the same sort of x and y axis of you know how many units of good x and units of good y. But here we're not taking the prices and your budget into account at all. We're just looking at your happiness level. So if I were to ask you which point do you prefer, this point or this point, without even any numbers, you can say that this point over here, the second point is better because it has more of both goods. So this is strictly preferred to this. But if I were to ask you which do you like, this point or this point, it's unclear. This has more of good x, this has more of good y. So it's unclear which one's better. They might even give you the exact same level of happiness. Suppose they do. Suppose this point and this point gives you the same level of happiness. Well, what that means is they're on the same indifference curve. So that's, that's a new term, indifference curve. I see you can abbreviate it as. Usually looks something like this. And what it's giving you is the set of all bundles, they give you the exact same level of happiness. The useful thing about this is now you can actually compare any two points on the plane. For example, if I wanted to compare this point with this point, and I know this indifference curve, see, without this indifference curve, it's unclear which point is better. This has more x, this has more y, then, and so it's unclear which one's better. But now we can say for sure that this point is better, means, give you, means that it gives you a higher utility than this point. Because this point, one way to think about it is this point, you know, it's, it's up and to the right, meaning compared to this point, right? So if you wanted to compare these, so you can definitely say that this circled point is better than this guy. But this guy is the same as all these points, including this one, for example, which is definitely better than this because it has more of both goods compared to this bundle. So uh, this is called the transitive property. You don't really need to know that, but, but any, any point on this indifference curve is definitely better than point A, but any point on the indifference curve is also definitely worse than point B, because point B is up and to the right of the indifference curve. So by transitive property, we can say then, well then, if B is better than all these, and all these are better than A, well then B is definitely better than A. So you can use indifference curves to kind of, you know, solve for, uh, you know, or, or kind of to figure out which, which points are better than others, even, you know, even if they're not, it's not clear. But now, here's a question. The slope of the indifference curve. What is the slope of this indifference curve? See, unlike this budget line, which had the same slope everywhere, this guy's slope changes everywhere, right? But either way, the slope of this is what we call MRS, marginal rate of substitution. So marginal rate of substitution. And it's equal to, it's, it's negative. Notice that indifference curve always have to be negative. An indifference curve can slope up because if it did, if you had an indifference curve that sloped up, what that means, again, indifference curve, just anytime you're confused, just try to think about the meaning. What does an indifference curve mean? Indifferent means, you know, they're both the same. You're indifferent. I don't care this one or this one. So this means you're indifferent between these two points. They give you the same happiness level. But that doesn't make sense because this has more of both goods, X and Y, compared to this. So why would you be indifferent between them? You wouldn't. You'd prefer this. So that's why if something sloped upwards, it's not an indifference curve. So the indifference curves definitely have to have a negative slope. Specifically, the slope of an indifference curve is always negative mu, marginal utility of good x, over the marginal utility of good y. Again, this is the same thing as MRS. And that's how you find the slope at every point. Now, marginal utility, marginal, next one, utility, happiness. Utility just means happiness. So this is saying, what's the extra happiness you get from one more of good x? That's what your mu is. And so now, this, this sort of explains now why this, this thing is not just a perfect line usually and why it sort of, it gets less and less steep, right? Notice how steep it is over here compared to over here. The indifference curves always get less steep. So, and it's because as you have more of good X, if you, as you have more pizza, each slice becomes less and less valuable. The marginal utility decreases as you have more of any good. And that's why the slope gets smaller and so it becomes less steep. Now let's talk about what's called the rational spending rule. Here's the rationale. Now let's kind of merge these two worlds into one graph. What if we were to put in a budget constraint into this graph, for example? Uh, here's the thing. 
let's say there's really three possibilities of what an indifference curve could be like compared to the budget constraint. It could either totally not touch it at all like it is over here, or an indifference curve could be tangent, meaning it only hits it at one point, or it could kind of intersect like it would over here. So here's the question. If we want to find the single best point that you can consume, let's see, there's three possibilities. Either that single best point could be, you know, somewhere where it's not hitting an indifference curve at all, but that doesn't make sense because all these points are unaffordable. So we can just rule that one out. So the only cases are either it's, you know, the indifference curve is intersecting the budget line like this, intersecting and going through, or it's tangent, meaning it touches it only at one point, you know, and it has the same slope over there rather than intersecting like this. So let's just, uh, you know, let's, what if somebody were to say, hey, you know what, if we were the first economist and we were wondering, hey, what if this point, you know, where if we were to redraw it here, where the indifference curve and budget line intersect like over here, what if that's the single best point? Could that be the single best point? Well, let's see. Compared to this point, what are all the points? Here's a question. What are all the points that's, uh, that are better than, than this point or really any point? Well, if you want to find all the points that are better, just you know, shade everything to the right of the indifference curve. So what are all the points better than this? Well, you know, the black shaded region over here. And here's the thing, of all those points that are better, meaning gives you a higher utility, by the way, each indifference curve corresponds to a specific happiness level. So that's why the more up and to the right, the indifference curve is the higher, happier, the happier you are. So really all these points, all these shaded, the whole shaded region, all those bundles would give you more happiness than this guy. But here's the thing, out of all those points, this region specifically, and I've sort of really shaded over here, this, these are affordable. They're within your budget line. So if we were wondering, is this a single best point that you can consume? Not really, because there's a, a whole region of points that are better and affordable. So we now can sort of say that anytime uh, you want to find the single best point, it's not going to be where an indifference curve intersects with the budget line. So the only remaining option is it's got to be where it's tangent. And just to further kind of see why, the only points better than this are all here. But, or you know, if we were to make a graph again, it's like the only points better than this are here. But none of those points that are better are affordable. So, you know, this is kind of, you know, and if you think about it, the only other affordable points are on lower indifference curves, right? All these other points on the budget line are on a lower indifference curve than this guy where it's tangent. So now, again, you don't really need to this is just sort of explaining why, but you don't need to recreate that reasoning every time. Just know then that this is why the best point is where the indifference curve and the tangent line are tangent to each other. Now tangent, if you were to ask a mathematician what does tangent mean, well, in part it means that the two things that are tangent have the same slope. So, well guess what? If we want to find where the slopes are equal, we know what the slope of the budget line is. The slope of the budget line is negative px over py. And we want that to equal the slope of the indifference curve, which is negative mux over muy. There you go. And this, you can rewrite this if you wanted. You could just uh, you know, cross multiply and divide and get rid of the negative sign because it's on both sides. And you'd get mu of good x over p of x equals mu of good y over p of y. These two are again saying the same thing. And either way, this is called the rational spending rule. That means if this equation is true, you're maximizing your utility. So basically, if you want to find a problem where you're maximizing utility, this is a condition you got to check for, that the extra happiness per dollar is equal for both goods.